So, Jack, we are in your shed at last with the mighty Land Rover. Yeah, thank you for coming, Will. Uh, it's, um, it's fantastic. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, I've had this Land Rover for, I think it's getting on for four years now. <laughs> Um, it's taken up quite a lot of my life. Yeah, I remember it being down <laughs> with me to begin with. Yes, it's it been was. all over the place. Isn't yeah, it? so it went up to it went up to Wales for a little bit. It's certainly looking better than it did back then. Yeah, well, I've I believe it or not, I've been through pretty much everything on this car. Have you really? Yeah, um, inside <laughs> and out. Yeah, you can't really avoid anything. You think, oh, that looks alright. We'll leave that, and then yeah. it comes up to bite you. So yeah, yeah well. everything needs doing on these. Um, but cosmetically, apart from cleaning it up a little bit as it was quite flat I mean, yeah. again it needs another polish yes don't look too closely but um co yeah cosmetically i've tried to keep it really original so we haven't we've got most of its original paint we paint we've blown in a couple of areas yeah but not significantly right so, so this front end for example is all original oh that's really it's original cool. pastel green paint well that's what everyone wants now isn't it yeah they like to see the dents yeah. it doesn't really bother me either because it means i can use the thing it's more like culture, um, isn't it? these dent ever so quickly <laughs> so tell us what it actually is yeah so this is um this is uh, 1983, uh, which is yeah. <laughs> pretty much the last year of production for a Series 3 Land Rover. So I mean, it's a bit contested. Some say it's 84 on an A reg. Yeah. Um, but I think this is pretty much when they were phasing over to the 90s and the 110s. Right. Uh, what would eventually become the Defender that we yes. talk about. This, of course, is not a Defender. A lot of people think it is. Yes, yeah, so this is a Series 3. That's right. No Defender. So Series 3 ran from uh, 1971 all okay. the way until yeah this one pretty much at the end of production oh right okay um but actually it's only really a facelift from the series two there's a few things we can point out uh, first of all i think the biggest thing is the the soft dashboard yes so the dials move from the center of the car out until they're in front of the driver where they actually where should, they be should be on a car <laughs> yeah. again something moving to where it should be on a car the lights in the late series two a's and the about 1968 move from in here on this balance panel out onto the wings okay um, so you can actually they actually sort of work a bit better there's still like candles in the wind in fact i've got some spot lamps i'll, I'll show you those in a minute brilliant um which i'm going to be fitting on the bumper some lucas spot lamps and uh, this is a diesel this is a diesel um which scares a lot of people when it comes to land drovers of yeah. this ilk um but this yeah it's two and a quarter litre diesel right producing a whopping 62 63 horsepower <laughs> which actually is about the same as the petrol i think um performance is possibly a bit better on the petrol okay yeah. um but easier this to work on perhaps yeah and they are easier to work on and this this engine has caused a lot of grief yes but running sweet, that said it? it now it now it's set up right yeah and it pulls well i i really like it the torque's really fun yeah um unlike a, unlike the petrol because the petrol you're up and down the box all the time and it's not the most delicious gearbox to have to be climbing up and down yes so when you're in fourth of this you can get into fourth probably at 20 miles now that's and top stay fourth is top gear right. so you're in you're in like a like driving a pre-war car you know say with bentley, people drove bentley's you read tim birkin's book yeah you, say, you get into top gear and that's it that's you, you stay you stay there, there. Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you don't change down if you want to stop yeah you, you, if you don't have to stop you don't you don't stop that's the <laughs> so it's like driving a truck you kind of keep rolling so you mentioned it's quite um agricultural you've done much towing with it uh, only little a, things a bit farmy it's, stuff it's one of those things it doesn't really keep up with modern traffic no. it's happy at 50 yeah but beyond that mm, okay. sketchy uh so yeah i'll just I'll tow a trailer but it's really for fun yeah i'm not i'm not a farmer despite no. what i'm dressed so like. A, yeah, I, say, um, dress like one. <laughs> I think it's all part of the it's all part of the uh all part of the package but but no I, I do like to i do like to use it a bit as it's intended i don't mind driving it at this time of year um, no it's just january it is january and filming. freezing and really cold yeah, yeah. um that's the grill muff on the front these are quite overcooled. oh right so that's a period accessory it is um it's it, they because these cars don't have like, modern cars have an electric fan of course and this has a viscous coupling so it's just constantly trying to cool itself down. yes so i don't weirdly I don't, it's not people talk about old cars overheating you actually so they don't talk about overcooling yeah. it takes a long time to get heat into this like in a cold day like today you're half in you know, a good 40 minutes yeah you've got any oil oil temperature actually up in it that's well, enough time to go for a cup of tea isn't it exactly yeah yeah um yeah the di I, I think the petrols are probably better than the diesels um, i say with hindsight but i like this one it's always been a diesel people swap them over but it's kind of a shame i think to take out that take out that sort of its heart really isn't it yeah I mean, tractor's a diesel. It sounds like a tractor. It drives a bit like a tractor. It looks a bit like You a get tractor. a roof. Yeah. <laughs> and a headlining in this one. It's, well, it's got posh. the deluxe interior. It's posh. It's posh. Why don't you show us around? Yeah, let's have a look. So 
So Jack, you told us this was a diesel Land Rover. Uh, let's have a look at the diesel power plant behind it. Yeah, so as I said, this is the two and a quarter litre diesel engine. Uh, they're indirect injection, so which is why they sound like a tractor. Um, but that fact that they are injection again is actually something that I do think is possibly these days better than the petrol engines. We're quite worried about fuel these days. Okay. Um, this will run anything, basically. Yes, as it's quite economic on fuel, isn't it? I, so I understand. It's all right. I could get, on a long run, I uh, did a bit of dual carriageway and did a bit of maths, and I could get about 40 mpg, which I think is pretty damn good yeah. for an old car. Um, I mean, not travelling quickly, so I suppose if you're equating it to that, you're not doing that well. And round towns, it's probably, what, 15, 16? Yeah. It's not great. Um, but, of course, being a diesel, fuel injection's quite handy. you never got fuel injection on a, uh, on a, on a petrol Land Rover. No, of course not. <laughs> for a really long time. Um, and, and, and that works actually works quite well, uh, using those old-fashioned CAV injector pumps um, and that sort of thing. I mean, these were designed for some, to be quite, obviously, being a Land Rover, designed for some quite tough environments. So you have... Uh, quite unusually an oil bath air filter on these series cars um, so that's filled with oil in there yes yeah, so it's just a better filtration system if you've got sand and dust and all sorts of things that you in normal sort of air filters you get on cars can cause a problem okay um, So Jack, anyone buying one of these uh, for the first time, or perhaps a returning customer from years past, what would you what would you recommend to them? Uh, well, I would say, we anything like this, uh, like you said at the beginning, originality. Yeah, of course, uh, is really important. Uh, what else to look for? Uh, it depends if you what kind of spec you like. I wasn't fussy. I think that's kind of a good way to go into buying a car. If okay. You're, yeah. If you're looking for a car, like, I want a russet brown one that's a county, or whatever. Yeah. You've got deep pockets. That's fair. You'll find one, and they're very cool as well. Yes. Um, I went into it just wanting one. I didn't really mind what if it was a series three, a series two, a series one would be great. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's good to be open-minded going into these, looking at. Just find the best example you can. Find the most original example. This one's a van, which I really like. Yes. Um, it's a pain sometimes because you've got back windows and you forget how much a blind spot Big becomes blind a problem spot, in a car. Sure. You end up poking your head out the windows. Helpful to have passengers sometimes. Yes. Just to be able to say, what's, what's just behind me there? Okay. But then you don't take these and decide to do load of motorway driving and sit driving in them. I mean, it's not that far, is it? That's, you, and people try and make them refine so they've got the certain overdrives and freewheeling hubs and they've upgraded the engine and whatever but you what you can improve them by doing that yeah absolutely but what you've still got is an old land rover right if you on. want to go up the motorway you need a, a a proper car these are not a car these are really bridging the gap between a commercial vehicle a, a truck a tractor uh, whatever they're for bimbling about in they're not for sure. <laughs> they're really not for doing those miles i've done some dual carriageway miles in it yeah it's fine it's loud I'm really pleased with how I've eradicated rattles on this car. It doesn't squeak and rattle at all badly. It's a nice quiet Which one. is unusual. Yeah. The, the engine is noisy in the diesel. Sure. Um, it, it just sounds it's like expected, a diesel. It's yeah. Um, but it doesn't squeak and rattle because that's the sort of noises that annoy me personally. Okay. Um, but yeah, bimbling around at 35, 40 miles an hour is great fun. Happy days. That's what it's all about for me.